Hello everybody and welcome to this 23rd and 24th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. Today's tutorial will be a combined series where that you have two tutorials in one video. So CDI or context and dependency injection for Java EE helps knit together the web tier and the transactional tier. It makes it easy for developers to use enterprise beans along with JSF technology and web applications. So to get started, CDI automatically provides dependencies to your objects and manages their life cycles as well. Let's take a look at this example without CDI. So over here, you can see that there's a method called init, which initializes your message object. Here, the message object has to be initialized, which is what the init method does. And now let's just use CDI to manage initialization of this object instead. The problem with this right here is that you have to manually go into every single piece of code and put this in it uh, like method and uh, it will create its initialization, but you can't control when it initializes or like um, how it initializes. So this is where CDI comes in. In the CDI bean, it looks for the classes that implement the message interface, finds the message B uh, class, creates a new instance and injects it into the servlet at runtime. So over here, you can see that this is our CDI bean called message B and it implements message. So back in our um, class over here, it tries to find anything that, uh, that um, implements this message interface and it injects it right into here. So to manage the lifecycle, the CDI runtime needs to know what the scope of the instance should be. In this example, the scope is given as at request scope. The, mes the message B class, once again, is a CDI bean. So an overview of CDI. So what does context and dependency injection mean? First of all, context means it enables lifecycle management. So it depends on um, where it injects stuff and how it removes stuff. It does it all automatically. And dependency injection, where it enables component injection in a type safe manner. This means that whenever you inject stuff, you don't have to worry about it being like of a different kind of object. It will automatically change it so it can fit your needs. And then there's CDI loose coupling which is part of CDI, and it makes a developer's life much easier since different components are not as connected to each other as previously um, before. This means that I can remove a single class and everything else won't be like completely shut down. Everything else can work on its own. So let's take a look at about beans. So CDI beans are simply a bean or EJB or manage bean, which handles CDI life cycles. Now that you got that, let's go into beans as injectable objects. CDI makes it possible to inject more kinds of objects and to inject them into objects that are not container managed. Let's take this code for example. In this co simple class, uh, it can actually be turned into a bean that we can inject into another class. So to use qualifiers, by the way, qualifiers are annotations you can apply on beans. The qualifiers over here are at qualifier, retention, and target, which tell us first that these are qualifiers, that this, uh, they're, um, they're, like, they're needed during runtime, and their target is on type, method, field, and parameter. You can then use this qualifier in a class like here. Uh, if you do not identify a qualifier, the at default qualifier will be used, like in this example over here. So going back to this example, let's show what this is doing. So this qualifier over here is telling us that this qualifier called informal will first run on runtime and it targets everything in the class. That means that this, uh, this class will then um, tar run on runtime and it will target everything in the class. And uh, once again, like I said, if you don't uh, identify a qualifier, the add default qualifier will be used, which does basically doesn't do anything. But um, it's basically the default of every class. So let's take a look in into injecting beans. In order to use the beans you create, you have to inject them into a bean that can be used a in an application, perhaps a JSF application. Let's take a look at this example. So over here, this example inserts the add default greeting implementation. The following inserts the at formal greeting. Uh, 
So here, once again, because you didn't identify any uh, qualifier, this is at default, like implicitly. And over here, since you did specify something, this will have the at informal greeting. Let's take a look at using scopes. So scopes are rarely used in most CDI uses. This is due to CDI's amazing ability to automatically create and destroy object instances, managing their life cycles extraordinarily accurately. But there may be some times where you may want to take over this management. There are design patterns like the singleton pattern that need to take control of the creation and destruction of object instances. To specify the scope, you use an annotation. So in this case, you can see that uh, this uh, annotation over here, um, like is kept as at request scoped. So this also ties into what we're, uh, we're going to say next about giving beans EL names. So putting the at named annotation makes the bean accessible by any facelet through the name printer. So look at that. We did uh, two, uh, uh, we hit two burns with one stone by saying that how to use scopes through using this at request scoped and giving uh, beans EL names by putting this at named. Now let's take a look at adding setter and getter methods. So this is actually really simple. Setters and getters make the manage bean uh, like accessible. With that, the bean is finally complete with all these setters and getters. So let's take a look, look at how to use this manage bean. So using this manage bean, um, this code uses the manage bean by asking the user to enter your name. It then returns a paragraph of their name with a salutation, either with um, either with like an informal greeting or a formal greeting, like you saw before. Either he will say hi, Viprov, or hello, Viprov. So let's take a look at injecting objects by using producer methods. Producer methods make it so that you can inject objects that are not beans or objects that are not defined until runtime. In this example, it uses a producer method from uh, for other managed beans to get the value of max number. This can then be used in another managed bean which initializes its max number to 100 due to the at max number qualifier. So once again, this call, uh, this uh, producer creates this, um, so it gets, it uses this um, method to get this number over here. And you can then use this producer method in another, let's say a managed bean. And uh, you can get the uh, private int max number from here too. So let's take a look at configuring CDI um, applications. Like other beans in Java EE, CDI can use deployment descriptors or beans.xml. Again, like all configuration file, anything defined in beans.xml will override any annotations in the CDI beans. But you already know that, so that's all right. Now let's take a look at add post construct and pre-destroy annotations. So the add post post construct is an annotation that can be useful when you want CDI to ensure a few objects are initialized before any service methods are run. In the example here, the annotation is used to annot uh, initialize these fields. And the add pre-destroy is not used much as its brother annotation, but it can also be useful in manual cleanup of an application. So once again, uh, like to ex uh, like to explain what add post construct does, it basically um, like resets everything after you construct like your um, class, and pre destroy make sure that you destroy everything before it, the um, program is done. You know, working. So with that, let's take a look at this simple greeting CDI example. Okay, so now that we're in our NetBeans, let's go ahead and click open project. Once inside here, let's navigate all the way up to your examples and click on the CDI and go ahead and open this project. This project, what we'll be talking about is everything that's simple to CDI, basically like scopes, qualifiers, um, like bean injections, and also other stuff as well. So first of all, let's take a look at our index.xhtml. Double click that. Inside our index.xhtml, it's really simple. All we have is a template where we talked about that in the previous tutorial. And we have just something called uh, output label and it's asking for your name. You enter your name and it creates a salutation for you. So now that you got that, let's take a look at our template. So double clicking this, you can see our template over here. 
One more thing that we want to take a look at before we start our stuff, let's go ahead into our um, packages and double click printer.java. So what this does is it actually tells us what um, it's going to print. So over here, you can see there's two annotations over here. You're using CDI to inject this greeting um, variable and it's using the at informal uh, qualifier. So that means that whenever this greeting, greeting is given, it will give it informally. So to see that, let's go ahead, start our services. So our server, go ahead and start our Glassfish server. And once that's done, let's go ahead and build our class. And once that is over, let's go to our tab and put in this URL. HTTP localhost 8080, simple greeting. So you will have your simple greeting. So let's go ahead and put our name called Viprov and let's say hello. And then it will say, hi Viprov. So this informal greeting is because our qualifier over here in our printer.java is set to at informal. Now, what if we actually comment this guy out, save it and go ahead and build it. And when it's done, let's go back to our simple greeting and let's paste that localhost 8080 simple greeting again. And let's put the same name and now it will say hello Viprov instead of hi Viprov. This is due to because this at informal is the qualifier that turns this greeting into an informal greeting. If we go to our informal.java, you can see that the qualifier actually turns the um, stuff into um, like it has its own qualifier called informal. And if you go to informal greeting, you can see that this informal greeting will actually um, override your greet method and it will replace it with your hi and your viprov. And that's it for the simple greeting. So let's go right on ahead and clean this guy so we don't have any background files. And let's close it for the next project. With that out of the way, let's take a look at the guest number CDI example. So now let's take a look at that project. So go ahead, open a project and go to guest number CDI. So if you remember from the previous tutorials, this is actually um, your friend Duke asking you to guess its number. So there's a few pages that I want to take a look at. So I want you to take a look at a few qualifiers that we have, a few custom qualifiers actually. So first is our maxim maximum number dot Java. Over here, you can see it's annotated with the add qualifier. And as such, this max number becomes a qualifier itself. And then there's a random.java, which is also a qualifier, the exact same thing. Um, it's also a qualifier itself. And looking into our generator.java, in here you'll see two producer methods, this next method and this get max number method. This one gets a random number for you to, uh, for you to guess, like it's a random number. And this one is a get max number, which gets you the maximum number that you want. So now that you got that, let's take a look into our manage bean. Over here, this just states the obvious. It has all our um, like variables that we want in our manage bean. And it injects this uh, max number and our maximum and our random integer. And it has all our setters and getters. And it has something special, which it checks um, the number that you've given. It resets if you've picked the um, number correctly and it validates the number range. So one thing that you want to take a look at at this reset is it says at post construct. This means that after the game is done, it resets the entire thing and it sets everything to zero and the remaining guesses to 10. So after you've done with these source packages, let's take a look at our facelit pages. And the rest is just a panel grid that shows you the, um, the number, the guess, uh, and a few buttons like the guess button, restart button. And, um, it tells you if, uh, your numbers should be higher or lower. Next, there's the template.xhml, which is just a simple template and it's super simple. All it has is a head, just, uh, some space in the middle and some content in, uh, inserted in the middle as well. So now that you get all that, I can explain to you everything in this code, but it's better if I show you. Let's go ahead and start our server. So uh, in my case, it seems like it's already started. And uh, let's go ahead and build it. 
Once it's done building, let's go to our Chrome and I'll put this link and paste it over here. And you got localhost 8080 guest number CDI. So uh, inside here in our guest number page, we have um, a Duke thinking of a number between zero and a hundred and you have 10 guesses. So let's try to guess something nice and around like 50. So let's go ahead and guess that. And he's, if you realize that the minimum number and the maximum number, uh, but more the minimum number, it changes to 51. This means that if I put something like, let's say something arbitrary, like 30, right? Which is less than 51. If I try to guess that it will say invalid guess, cause it's definitely not higher than 51. And what's nice is that your guesses don't go down. If you put something dumb, like let's say zero. So um, let's try something, let's try to actually figure this out. So let's try 60, so higher, let's highball it, 90, 80, lower, 70, okay, 60. Oh, 60 doesn't work because it's not, um, it, it has to be between 61 and 69. If you saw it, um, I, when I was going from the highest to the lowest, it was actually reducing this maximum number. So now I got five guesses to get this. So I hope I get this really. So uh, let's try 61 higher. 62 higher. Okay, all right. I might, I might. Higher four, five. Ah, oh, it must have been between 66 and 69. Nice. Uh, but now we, we've run out of guesses. So, um, all we got to do is click restart and we can try it again. And yeah, that's it. Um, you can figure it out. You can try out with, uh, on your side and tell me if you actually get it. Um, but with that, I'll leave this example to that. That's it, everybody. That's the end of this tutorial on introduction to CDI for Java EE. I hope you understood how it um, basically ties in um, beautifully how the web tier and the tra transactional tier can work together as one laminar flow. But now that you know that, I'll see you in the next video where we'll be talking about CDI in more advanced topics.